I'm here today with Mike Harden. Mike, I know you've been with the Fisheries Division for a long time and you're currently program manager and assistant director, but lifetime musky fisherman. Lifetime. I grew up, uh, first place I ever swam was at a riffle at the mouth of Warks Run Creek. Oh yeah. And of course that's impounded by Cave Run now and it's also a good musky place. We recently just spent some time at Minor Clark Fish Hatchery, which is pretty important for the musky population here in Kentucky. Uh, Clark Hatchery is the only hatchery, we've got two hatcheries, and that's the only one that grows musky. So actually the, the trying to reintroduce musky into our waters in, a, in greater numbers kind of started very close to Cave Run Lake. How many years ago? That's well interesting. It's 1973, so that puts it at about 50 years uh, this year. Okay. So. You know, we ought to commemorate that and go musky fish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I couldn't agree more. You, I think I caught my first musky with you in the boat we uh, did. at Cave Run Lake. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that is no, this, awesome. This, that time of year is not that far away. It'd be time to go try it again. Here at the end of summer, when we start seeing some cool nights, it'll be time to get out the bucktails and, <laughs> and go give them a shot. So tell me a little bit about what the department does in the process of, of raising musky to be released back into our Kentucky streams and lakes. We get fish from uh, the local waters, uh, usually out of the tail waters or, or the lake, and uh, we bring them to the hatchery. And of course, then we go through the, the hatchery protocol to induce spawning. We're located just below Cave Run Lake here, so we have easy access to the brood fish and we're able to maintain brood stock on site as well. Females are spawned into a dish pan. Once we collect the eggs from the females, we'll have a separate crew that are collecting the milt from the males. Milt is added at a couple different stages during the fertilization process. Once the egg collection is complete for that female, we'll add water that's stirred in for about two minutes to ensure that the eggs are fertilized. Once it's been two minutes, we'll rinse the eggs off with water three times. Then we'll add diatomaceous earth stirred into the eggs. That is allowed to sit on the eggs for about a minute and then we'll rinse three times. Then the eggs are set aside to allow the water harden for about three hours. After they water harden for three hours, we will take the eggs. We will actually use a disinfectant called uh, Ovidine. Uh, the eggs are disinfected in, in a disinfectant bath for about 10 minutes and then the eggs are split into different hatching jars and placed onto the hatching battery. They'll stay on the hatching battery for about 11 to 14 days until they're ready to be pan hatched. After we pan hatch the eggs, they're placed into trays inside our tanks here. They will swim out of those trays in five to seven days and they'll go down into the Spontex material in the tanks. After about 11 to 14 days, they'll swim out of that material and go through what's called swim up and they'll swim up to the surface. At that point, we'll take those fry and we'll stock them into seven to nine one acre ponds down here on the hatchery. After we put them in the ponds, we, we don't stock fry or like we do some of the other fish. Okay. Uh, we grow these out, and so we feed them, give them a lot of great care, because we, you know, we want to make sure that we have the most success when we put them in the water. So we grow them out with uh, feeding them minnows or goldfish, and then at the end of the summer, we have two different stocking categories. We'll stock our streams with uh, nine inch fish. But for our four lakes, Cave Run, Green River, Buckhorn, and Dewey Lake, we grow them out to a little bit longer you see those in around the 12 inch range. 
and that gives them a good chance of success. Each year, you know, we try to raise 11, 12,000 fish there at that hatchery. And then of course, those get distributed across the state. So it's very important and uh, it's critical to the muskie. Interestingly, one of the best streams uh, in those early surveys for muskie, you know, back in the late 60s and 70s, one of the best streams was the North Fork of Licking River, which now, of course, is the headwaters of, of Cave Run. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I know you love, I know you love the muskie. Every time we start talking muskie, you get that grin and that giggle, and you're <laughs> like, uh, I know you, you love fishing for them. And you know what, if you've ever had success catching a muskie, how could you not? I mean, it is literally the apex predator, the, the wolf of the water. And I'm very proud of the work that's being done right there at Minor Clark. Yeah, the work that's being done now and uh, really the foundational work that some of our early biologists here at the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife did. You'll see their work cited uh, in many of the other states' uh, uh, muskie programs as well. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. And Thanks, next, Dad. next time it'll be, instead of standing by water, we'll be on the water. In six weeks. That? In six weeks, <laughs> let's hit it. Let's do it. <laughs>